take too kindly to non-residents <laughs> in this area. Oh, well, sorry. We'll just keep moving on then. <laughs> around here for y'all, unless you come squirrel hunt. Yeah. It's a long way to squirrel hunt. Plenty of squirrels though. We'll check the weather to figure out how much, how wet it's going to be tomorrow. See if we need to start looking for open spots or, mm -hmm. or if we're cool to dive right into the stuff that's normally good. I looked at it a little bit ago and it looks like it's going to be possibly raining first thing and then just kind of like 50%. All day. <clears throat> we can get in there and swing the bat. Sounds good. Well, we'll pull right, up man, there. Yep. All right. <clears throat> I guess the the thing right now that we're dealing with is is weather. That's why we pulled out of the last spot and hunters. There's going to be more hunters here. It's seeming like already. Hey, good to see y'all. The reason that we pulled out of the last spot, the final decision, was because basically after you know middle of the afternoon today, it was just going to be raining there the rest of the weekend. So. Here, we're at least looking like we're gonna have the afternoons that are pretty clear, maybe a little bit of time in the morning. So hopefully the weather allows us to at least get out part of the day. That's the hope at least. And it looks like this stuff, I mean, is really good habitat. It's just a matter of if it's been pressured too much or not. Dave has not hunted here this year, but neither have we. So it should be pretty fun to break it down. We're gonna start looking at some maps and the season has been open three weeks. So never know under the camp here and start making a game plan i'm trying to think um one spot like i said it all depends if you want to go close i can tell you they've been pounded pretty good for the last few weeks um if you want to go close and just jump in and look for fresh sign and be close enough to where you can pop back out and go somewhere new we can do that or if you want to i would just about go in somewhere deep mm -hmm. somewhere you know it if you do find fresh sign it, it'll it'll most likely not be over hunted. That place that y'all were in is loaded with bears. You won't find bears here. Well, I mean, you know, they're here, but occasionally, but not yeah, often. Not often. Now, hogs. Unfortunately, you'll be running up on them. I killed one on the way in last year. Just out of frustration, I was on my way turkey hunting, and I hate them so much because oh, yeah. I know what's coming. I know they're going to ruin spots oh, that I've yeah. hunted my whole life, and it's just looking at me, and I'm just looking back at it, going. <laughs> I think that's an awesome strategy. Maybe a little quicker than our strategy. right there all right guys I'm really fired up I've heard a bird right here somebody's calling me maybe they heard it too I'm hearing it a lot son you hearing that that's a Georgia gobble boy do you do you know where he is here I'm gonna hit this owl hooter one more time I didn't hear him that time, did you? I think I got an idea. I'd like to see your opinion before I tell you, but I think I know, I think I know where he's at. Jake and I are both gonna pin where we think this turkey is. Hopefully, make a game plan for the morning. I think we got a pretty good shot. We're gonna compare notes when we get back. I thought I heard a turkey gobble three times. Once he, fl he fly, fly up cackled, like 
oh, really? is away. And I heard that. I mean, I know where we can listen there. Where we're going to be above everything, and you're going to hear everything in the country there. It's all dependent on if you how sure you are on exactly where he was. Because if you were confident, we would try to kind of sell out and go right there on to him. where when he got what he was within a hundred. You see what I'm saying? Oh yeah. <clears throat> Good news is nobody's drove down this road, so I yeah. don't think anybody else heard him. No, yeah. at least not from this road. Driving. But tomorrow's Saturday, so mm -hmm. at about 30 minutes before sunrise, that road will sound like the Talladega 500. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think really the, the the transition from last spot to the spot is a good learning point, though. Like you said earlier, like if you're not having luck, just bail. Like go mm -hmm. somewhere else. Like if you're not here, it's always good to have a couple different plans. Yep. Yep. Everybody always asks me what what is something you suggest. I say I always pick somewhere. Do your research on a spot and then pick somewhere a couple hours away mm -hmm. because birds here may be hinned up or not there or in some type of funk and then two hours away or even an hour away they can be clicking on all cylinders so mm -hmm. it's always good to like you know having a plan a b and c is not mean a b and c in the same right you know 100 acres no, like yeah. have a b and c make them if you're you know that's the beauty behind just camping or sleeping out mm -hmm. of the truck or whatever being able to be mobile you know, be mobile because if they're not clicking move an hour up the road move north move south whatever you need to do get on a different you know little <laughs> I take that's guys. it folks <laughs> <laughs> here i can click them back huh? really but that's good. basically exactly what we what we're doing here is you know, you didn't you didn't have a lot of luck at the first spot. You move a couple hours or a few hours and all right guys. We'll see you in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, we need to make this 
decision, even if it's wrong. Yeah. I think you get a hundred along the side here without bumping the hill. I think you said. Yeah. You want to get on that tree? I'll call to him from here. We'll see how he reacts. If he stays there for 15 minutes, we'll make a move. If you want.
see him, I'd say we can probably move up a bit. spooked him. I think he might have just... I don't think we did. Mm. I don't think we did either because he was he was over that hill. And I mean, it's so thick in here that he, he'd have had to been right on top of us to see us. Especially with the extent of how little we were moving, you know. Yeah. I mean, we were 25, 30 yards from him the whole time. If you're just a turkey hunter, you'd 100% crawl up there and shoot that thing. And we had all kinds of room to do it too. It's just hard to do it with two guys because Jake's got that ridiculous, ridiculously huge camera. And when you got a turkey that's been called to, I mean, he's not very far from the road. You know, he's not just gonna come stomp, stomping right down to the call. Like, I mean, in a picture perfect world, that's what happens, but it, you know, it doesn't happen like that on public land. You know, and that guy that's way over there calling, I mean, he's calling a lot and he's a long way away from that turkey and that turkey never moved all morning. He flew down and he stayed right on that same spot. But because he was gobbling, we were able to get closer. And I thought, Dave dropping way back, I thought that that might bring him up here just 10 more yards. And I thought maybe if we just kept being patient, we could you know, at least get some video of him and shoot him. But he wasn't leaving that spot. And then he eventually just up and picked up shop and moved, it sounds like, because he was gobbling, 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 nothing. And like Jake said, I'd, I mean, we both agreed that we didn't spook him because the last time he gobbled, gobbled and drummed, he was right on the other side of that hill, and we never moved. I mean, we had then stood up and he gobbled. I don't know. I wanted to crawl up there so bad. He was right there. Last time we heard he was right there. Just got to a point, it's like, if, if you're alone, snake up through there and you shoot him right there. I mean, he would come here just this open over there where I was at. I was like, y'all are caught in this dick stuff. Yeah. So hope he's gonna walk, hope he's gonna walk the top. Let's go on now, that's the thing. Last we heard, he was just over that lip. You could hear him. So he was as close to me as he was to y'all because I was right there. Yeah. You know why he didn't walk the top? At he least pop it. over, you know? Well, yeah, I didn't think he'd come up to here just looking, looking down in here. Yeah, that's what he was right there. The last three times he gobbled, he was. He was moving to the right. He was right there. That's a full grown turkey right there that just gobbled. Yeah. That's that one. He's not gobbled a lot. I kept trying to get him to strike so I could play him off him, but he mm -hmm. wouldn't. 
Get, get, get ready. All right, that bird that we were up on that ridge, real close to, is completely shut up at this point. The whole time we were up there, there was what sounded like a couple jakes and a, one tom, and they kind of linked up maybe. Right as we were starting to come back across, they gobbled one time. So we're just kind of trying to ease in, try to get into their bubble to where they'll gobble, and you know, we can at least relocate where they're at. The last gobble sent all that wrapped back around, so if we can get up in this chute here, basically a finger ridge, and we're on one chute, and they'll be on one chute, so if we can kind of pop over the top and call and get them to respond in that chute, and potentially put a play on them. Yeah. Good job, Jacob. All right guys, so Jake and I just got to Missouri and the rest of the guys are here. So they're gonna be hunting here for a while, but just wanted to recap Georgia real quick. Obviously, initially we went into a spot kind of blind. We saw some turkeys, felt confident going in, and then hunted a couple days, really covered a ton of ground and didn't run into anything that was gobbling at least. And in hindsight, what we should have done is just pulled out of there immediately. We eventually did with two days left, but only one of those two days was good weather. And in that day, we had some action and we were in the turkeys. But as we've talked about, you know, having a backup plan when you go on an out-of-state trip is, is definitely important. And not just a backup plan within an area, a backup plan, you know, maybe a couple hours away. It's hard to hunt turkeys when they're not gobbling when you're out of state. So you basically have to be hunting gobbling turkeys. It can be done. Potentially, we could have got lucky and had some action there in the last two days if we would have stayed in that original area, but being mobile definitely got us a lot closer. And it didn't really take long. I mean, the first night we roosted a turkey, and then the next morning we almost got him, and then almost got on some other turkeys as well. But that's it for the southern part of the turkey tour, I guess. We're gonna be kind of just working our way north from here. We're gonna be doing some northeast, we're gonna be doing some northwest, north central, working our way north as the season goes on, and we're pretty much gonna be going until June, so. We're excited about the rest of it. I think Missouri ought to be pretty good for these guys. It's pretty green here. That's a wrap. Thanks for watching. We enjoyed Georgia and it's on the list for next year. We're going to be back.